you know, very small, first of all, very uh, family oriented. You know, you feel at home here, obviously, and it's beautiful. And, you know, growing up, this was uh, obviously a phenomenal place. It was growing very fast in height and got better and better and better. He always wanted to be best. Trying to get a glimpse of either the game or the team coming out, so. That's a big time memory that I have. I did something stupid, he would tell mom, so. One, two, three, four. <laughs> That's how I learned to count. <laughs> Not in school. <laughs> First big trophy. <laughs> By far the best thing I've bought in my life. You know, this is a place where we want to go uh, back to when I'm done playing hockey. It's quite a small town, very narrow to everything. Very nice nature around us. Both the sea and the mountains and things like that. Nice place to live in. You know, I feel at home here, obviously, and it's beautiful and, you know, I haven't spent any winter here in a long time, but the winters are also very, very nice. A little bit darker than it is in the summer, but uh, you get a lot of snow, you go skiing, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, you get all the seasons here, which is nice. You know, coming from a small town like this, uh, you know, you got everything you need, but you know, kind of a team first mentality. There's no egos. There's no, uh, you know, I'm better than you or bigger than you. It's just uh, everyone's at, on the same level, and uh, you know, obviously, big hockey community at the same time. And uh, you know, everyone lives and dies by uh, by Modo, and uh, you know, very proud of their uh, exports of the NHL. Everybody talks about Modo, so if you read the newspapers, almost every sport in the winter is Modo, Modo. So, it means a lot. This is where I play my first pro games. First game against Eurogarden was here. I scored an own goal in that game, but... Which net, which net was it at? Yeah. This one right here. My second year was a lot of fun. We missed the playoffs, but that was an unbelievable season for me personally. World Juniors, you know, had a good season at home and then the draft after that. You want to play in the NHL, you want to play in the best league in the world, but, you know, before that uh, becomes a reality, you want to play for that, uh, for the senior team, but uh, it's a long climb and you need some luck on the way, you need some, obviously, some talent and uh, playing for three crowns and Moda was the, the first goal and then we started realizing and learning about the NHL that obviously became the main goal. I got a nice uh, welcoming home last summer after the second cup. They had me on the ice and few gifts, they gave us a box so we could watch the game, but you know, they take good care of their own, which is pretty cool. In the future when I retire, I'll, I'm sure I'm gonna have season tickets to, to, to watch them play. So this is the wall where all the NHL players are. This is everyone from our hometown. So back in, first guy from our hometown to make it over, 1974. Anders Hedberg, so. He showed the way. Oli, how many of these players did you have when you were the equipment? I have to start from the end. <laughs> no, I had him, I had him, and him. Well, we started with uh, the oldest son, Johan, when he started to play hockey. So I think I will help them from the beginning. And then I went to the under 20 team in Mudo. I was there, so totally I think I was an equipment manager for like 21 or 22 years. He didn't treat me any different just because I was his son. You know, I had to wait like everyone else, but it was good. It was, uh, it was good to have on the road always and spend some good memories together, so it was pretty cool. Big positives was being around your dad. The negative was probably if I didn't, if I did something stupid, he would tell mom, so. <laughs> but I say I was harder to them than the other boys in the team. It paid off. <laughs> so the last time they won the Swedish championship was in 07. This was the captain. And here you can see the golden helmets. That's what you get when you win. My brother was on the team. Toby was on the team, obviously. 
And this is the strength coach, Hans. And my brother was part of that team as well. Hey there. Oh, if we go this way, there's a big picture. I was in Finland actually when they won because we had under 18 world championships playing against Stammer. So I didn't get to watch the game. Kampahallen. How long was that around? That big this time? Kampahallen. Around the 60s, 70s. Mm. It was built in the 60s probably. And then torn down in 2010 maybe. Probably 5,000 people. But it was so loud. It was a intimidating place to go. Actually, Victor learned numbers when he was with us watching the older brothers play. He used to, he had numbers on the seats, you know, one, two, three, four. That's how I learned to count. <laughs> Not in school. <laughs> I was there for the first time. I don't know how old I was, a couple weeks old. My brothers played probably, so I was there right away. So. A lot of history, but. So this is the old, old rink where I grew up playing, Camp Hallen. But now it's just, as you can see, it's a crater. There's still, one of the rinks are still here, but. So this is where I grew up playing, hockey and soccer, obviously. But, but it was so loud, it was an old barn, obviously. 5,000 people, low ceilings. It was intimidating. It was uh, rowdy. It was uh, kind of like Long Island, New York Islanders, kind of like that. So, very cool. I was here last week too with Rio, actually running around down here, but I told him this is where Daddy used to score goals. He'll have no memories of it, obviously, but hopefully he get to play in the other rink. But it's very, very cold in the other rink. I'm not gonna lie. Favorite moment was probably winning the, the Moto Cup when we were 16. Uh, I think that was the first time in 15 years, maybe. Moto actually won that tournament, so it's a huge tournament. People or teams from all over Sweden came here, so we were able to win that with the guys that I grew up playing with from the age of five till 16. So that was a very special moment. I'm not gonna lie, that was that was very cool. We won two one against Eurogarden, and. Uh, yeah, the same guy who barely scored any goals, he scored two goals in that game, so very cool. <laughs> Soccer in the summers and then uh, hockey in the wintertime, but at a certain age, you got to pick and choose, obviously, but just very fortunate. Everything is so close here. I mean, that's what I loved about it, too. Like, sure, you need your parents to, to drive you, but then when the weather was good enough, you know, you can get here yourself. So made it, made it a lot easier, obviously. And then my school is just another few minutes down the road. So everything was close. I was lazy, so I always got picked up, but to get down here was easy. This used to be my stall with the under 18 team. I don't know exactly if it was right here, but this was our locker room. And then the other one was the under 20. And like I said, this way, this way was to the rink that's no longer with us. You just walk this way and see those doors over there. That's where you walked out to that rink. Well, it was cool when we were so when we were young, you know, around ten. So when this when the moto team, the big team, played, this door was always closed and locked, so you couldn't get through because they came out this way. But I remember when we had practice over here and they had a game over there, there would be twenty people just trying to get a glimpse of either the game or the team coming out. So that's a big time memory that I have. Everyone is gathering here and then seeing the senior team walk out. So that's probably sticks out the most, like us being here, looking, obviously looking up to them and wanted to be like them and get to see them up close. So that was pretty cool. Coaches wanted him to be a goalie and his mother said that we don't gonna buy you a hockey mask or something like that. He was a goalie until he was 14, but then he started shooting too hard. So pretty sure that's why my mom was a little bit worried about it. So she said, uh, she asked me what I wanted if I, if I was gonna pl quit playing goalie. And I said, well, then I need a new helmet. And then for Christmas, I got this new helmet and uh, the rest is history. So that's why I 
became a defenseman. I stayed true to my promise, and she stayed true to her promise. He was very tall, and he was a little bit like uh, wingling, and he was growing very fast in height, and everything didn't compare at once. So, but in the end, it got better and better and better. Kind of hit a stride there when I was probably 12 or 13, and then started to play with people that was uh, a little bit older. And then I made a jump to under 18. Made my first game at 14 with the under 20 team. Uh, that's kind of when he knew that you had something maybe. He always wanted to be best and a bad loser. <laughs> but that goes for all my sons. I just kept at it, you know, did as good as I could uh, in the summers and in season and see where it took me. So uh, very happy where it took me. So right over there, you got the world's largest hockey stick. Like I said, new benches since I was here, new boards, but same ice. Always good ice here because it's so cold. The ice was always so good. It's not the humidity as we have in Tampa. I mean, I had great coaches. They allowed us to have fun, you know, do what we'd like. Uh, wasn't that serious, obviously, at a young age, but we just loved being on the ice and yeah, we had a great team. Had a lot of fun. We won a lot of games. We had a lot of talent in our team. My brothers probably taught me the, you know, the to be competitive. You know, I always got to challenge them. They were older, and you know, I was younger, smaller, obviously. And but uh, that's probably why I got competitive because I wanted to do the same things as they could do. But so that was probably why I think I got that competitive. Competitive, but. You know, first and foremost, I started hockey because it was fun and it still is to this day, but obviously on a different level now. But, you know, that's why I think you started to love the game because it was so much fun. You have to be with your friends and have a good time on the ice. So this is the school. So this is where we uh, waited to get picked up. Lots of bench. Yeah, probably still the same bench too. So this was, uh, yeah, the same school for a long time. Yeah, that's, uh, how old was I there? That was probably grade three. <laughs> but in grade nine, I got the uh, uh, student of the year for combining uh, hockey and school. So, proud moment. First big trophy. <laughs> that's a big guitar. <gasps> Stood. Stood. So this was a cafeteria. Maybe it still is. This is where you buy all the snacks when we were grade seven, eight, nine. And in grade seven, I was part of the, uh, you had like different uh, organizations in school. And I was part of the ones that were taking care of this, but I gave away too much, so I got kicked out. <laughs> so you give free things to your friends? No, but the older people, older guys. So I got kicked out, I think. <laughs> so you see that picture when I was out Time when I was had that Nike shirt on, we just finished playing in here before we had our school picture, so everyone was drenched. So it got heated here too. What would you, yeah, what would you play in here? Floor ball. Yeah, that's what we played all the time. So a lot of fun, a lot of fun memories from here, obviously. See. Now this will stay here until someone else from the school wins the Stanley Cup, <laughs> which is hopefully in the future. So it'll look good. Papa. You guys want to go see the rink where we played? So this is where we played. That's so cool. Yeah. So this is obviously new. So we, me, Daniel, and Henrik Sedin, we donated some money for two of these rinks. It used to be, it should be turf too for the summer, but then during the winter time, it's obviously a nice sheet and netting around and a couple of nets. So now they're calling it seven sevens meeting spot. You can see the sign up top there. It lights wouldn't come out on at night unless you push that button over there. So you got to press it. It's like a timer. So sometimes if we're here long, it would go dark again and you got to press it again. You can obviously walk from our house up here. Sometimes you can skate on the road when it was freezing. This was all wood. It was rotten and it was kind of falling apart. So 
they've been looking for getting something like this. Uh, so, yeah, they moved this. This, used, this was down by the, the rink we were at yesterday, before, but we felt like the purpose and would, it would be better to have it here. So when we won the second cup, that's what kind of the town gave to me. It was like, put it here, put in new lights, like the meeting spot and, you know, in my honor. So uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I remember I got the door over me and it was like a rossy little nail. It went straight through my wrist. <laughs> yeah, I still have the scar. Here, you can see the scar. So it came in here and then went out this way. And how did that happen? So the door on the old one was kind of loose. I don't know what happened. I was kind of, I don't know how old it was. I wasn't that old. But somehow it fell and I fell under it and just came down on my wrist. Can you spring? Who is that spring? Klara, färdiga, go. Oh, spring. Då måste du ju leta. Då måste du leta. Då. Ja. Tror kan man fika lite? Nej. Jo. Fika, fika, fika. Fika, fika, fika. Bye bye. Jo. Nej. Jo. Nej. Jo. Åh, jo. Ska du ta dig väskan då? Ja. Pappa tar den. So right now we're at my parents' house. This is where uh, I grew up, obviously, and uh, let me give you a tour. We'll start upstairs where all the boys slept at the end. This used to be my room at the tail end of my stay. This is the last memory of uh, me staying in this room. That's me. <laughs> the bed wasn't like this, but much smaller. Did you have a lot of posters? I did have a lot of posters, yeah. Actually, my grandpa painted that one. Here's all the prizes we won when we were younger. I mean, these are all the World Juniors, but they're all silver medals, obviously. There's lots of cannon in both of them. Uh, right now it's a guest room. This is Rio's bed when he stays here. I think that's from when I was, I don't know how old this is, but it still works. This is also the three of us. Here you can see. So that's my oldest cousins right there. And that's the three of us. I'm probably Rio's agent. Oh, maybe a little bit older, but. Okay, so I was upstairs, playroom. Like I said, this was my room for a little bit. No. Now it's a playroom for all the kids. <laughs> the grandkids. Yeah. Kitchen area. The intercom was right here, actually. It's gone now, but it was right here. And then the basement is right here, obviously. So press here, call down, and make sure that we uh, knew the food was ready. We will come running up. So let's go down to the basement, the fun part. This is the sports bar. You see all the memorabilia around. All the hats. Hey, I'm just saying. So come on. Yeah, we should go in there. Hello, va. So stay down here, though. Hahaha 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 So this is This is where all the action took place in here Here we got Vassy on the wall This neck is still from the days we were playing This is new But then we line these up and then just play Like this Mål, 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 mål. It's called floorball. It's uh, kind of like a round ball. And 
like it hits your thigh, it stings big time. So they were shooting it hard at me. I was usually the goalie, so. So we go here and play and shoot. These pads are still, these are pretty new. But we use, these are all from when we played. So this was my gear. We just played all the time. And then sometimes when not everyone was at home, you played by yourself down here. You played goalie by yourself. Like it's stuff, you always spend time down here, even though if you were alone or with your brothers or friends at that time. So you played as much as possible. It was a big age gap. So, uh, you know, say I was six, Johan was 14. So it's, uh, he was a teenager at the time. So toughened me up pretty good. And then uh, if I didn't like a shot, uh, I would chase him down right after. But usually they come running up. Yeah. They first or Victor after with the stick or Victor first crying and they offer him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of friends over here. Yeah. Running rollerblades. Yeah. That was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I had to read on the floor. Yeah. When they left. They were toast. <laughs> But we had a lot of fun together. There's no no doubt behind that. So uh, you embrace that, and you look back at it now. It's uh, very special times, and you know hopefully that continues with uh, with my kids. He loves the vacuum. <laughs> You can, no, you can dump sugar on it. I think I should sleep. Let's go night night. It's always a bad idea to bring out the vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. Camera. Yeah. Camera. 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 Papa. Yeah. Far, far. Yeah. Far more. Yeah. Camera. Yeah. Food. Yeah. Ost. Yeah. Yogurt. Yeah. Sked. Yeah. Far more. Yeah. Far, far. Yeah. Kaffe på. Yeah. Bord. Yeah. Nej. Skräp. Fan det bagge loves. Men jag vet inte bara. Bagge. Yeah. Fan det bagge. Jag ser Josh. You want to see him again? He, he understands when I put on my suit that I'm leaving. Then it's bye bye. Mm. Bye bye. Mm. <laughs>
with some mixture of new. This is obviously from uh, when the house was built, 1916, I think it was. Um, but yeah, this is where we cook the meals. We like to keep it old, obviously, kind of keep it with the charm of the house. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been working so far. But still work to do, obviously, with living room. Couches are new, but I love the new or the old fireplace. You don't get those anymore, so you gotta keep the standard. Yeah, you don't, you don't get this new anymore, so, but it's fully functional, heats up quickly. And uh, like I said, very cozy. But I like all this, you know, the stuff that was intact and, you know, from when the house was first built. I like I'm that. Sorry, what year was that? I think it was 1915 or 16. Yeah, very old. There's actually an old picture right here. That's the boathouse we came to. We see all, this is the house. <laughs> and that's the farmhouse, obviously. But you see, there was no forest around at that time. So you can see the ocean, actually, but now this is all grown, obviously. This house is still there. So these are the oldest houses. And then this was hiding in the background, so you bring a little bit of new stuff. But this kind of fits here with the wood and everything, so. Won't forget that. So this is fermented herring. It's a fish that's rotten, pretty much. And the smell from it is disgusting. I don't like it personally, but it's a tradition and uh, something that people really like. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of how the can looks. But this is filled with uh, something else. <laughs> uh, it's not water, but uh, something you can drink. So uh, we'll keep those here. But then, yeah, upstairs we got all the bedrooms. This is the master, old, still got the old uh, kind of like stove to here. I don't know if it works, but uh, probably not. I haven't tried it yet, but they probably had us like an apartment back in, in the day, so. But still cool. It's weird to see in a bedroom, but. It works. You know, this is where you find relaxation at its best. Uh, during the summertime when it's nice and warm, you know, the days are long. You know, you sit down here on this dock and you have the sun and the sunset all down here. I mean, it's, uh, it's picture perfect. It's a, uh, you know, this is, uh, like I said, it wasn't really a dream, but it should have been. You know, this is by far the best uh, thing I bought in my life. This is my favorite restaurant right here. They are closed for the season though. Tiny, like a little courtyard. Ulvebyn. So you can sit in here in this little house here. Yeah, you get away. Like today we're probably, I mean, one of the few people on the island. So it's kind of nice. All the people are so nicer. You know, something happens like a water leak we had a couple weeks ago. You can go to the next house and they have something to fix it for you. So, uh, you know, like a, like I said about my hometown, this has the same kind of thing. It's a little bit smaller, obviously, but uh, you know, everyone helps each other out and uh, goes a long way. When there's like a there's like a regatta, then this place is just full with boats, which is pretty cool. Every year, yeah, four days I think it is. So there's like a sailing race around the island, and then everyone comes in, and then yeah, just boat hopping and people having a good time. It's usually not this quiet, but like during the summer, it is packed. And you want to make the city proud, and uh, you know, that's kind of the way I look at things. And uh, you know, I don't think I've changed a lot as a person since uh, I moved over there, but uh, you know, maybe a little bit more. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of a lot of the world, but uh, this is still home to us, and uh, you know, this is a place where we want to go uh, back to when I'm done playing hockey.